All right, and now out here at Ticket Stock, let's say hello to Antoine Roussel of the Stars. Yeah. Hi, guys. How's it going? Look Good. at him up here. Look at the girls yeah, out there going crazy. So we already had like an awkward girl moment because this <laughs> young girl down here. How old are you? 15? 16? Okay. Woo. So she flipped out when you came out here on stage, which is it's nice. You know, you're a rock star and everything. So we were telling, we were telling Antoine, like, you know, the girls were, because he was standing over there actually when they started going crazy. So we're telling him the story in the break of you, young lady in particular, and Danny goes, yeah, and her, her boyfriend was like holding her back. I go, you mean her dad? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's her dad? So compliments to you, sir. I guess yep. uh, you're looking Still good. Still looking you know? younger than, Who than known? you should. Who would have known? I can't tell anymore with girls, and then man. He, Yeah, and then he tells Antoine that he can't tell if they're 14 or 47 anymore. They that, all look the same. That sounds all like right, an 80-year-old man. Right, I am an 80-year-old man. That's all right. They can't tell if you're 47 or 77 <laughs> either. <laughs> you just well, need glasses, I guess. Yes. Yeah. How are you, Antoine? Great. Just uh, happy to be here. Just uh, to see a couple fans and uh, excited. So, I guess you are you moved from France. Well, you're one of eight French-born hockey players in the NHL currently. So, in France, when you start playing sports and you are you start to be six, seven, eight years old, at what point did you gravitate to hockey? Well, uh, I was a busy kid when I grew up. Uh, I couldn't stand like that kid. I was always running around and can't stop. So uh, my mom put me uh, in rugby team to start. And uh, I was a bad leader. I tried to, uh, it was so sunny outside and uh, so <laughs> hot, just like Texas weather, basically. And uh, I need water. So I said, hey, boys, let's go get some water. So the practice will always stop every two, four minutes to get some water. So the coach was so mad at me. And uh, it's the first time I get kicked out of the team. So you were uh, kicked off I got the team? kicked out of the team. How old were you? Four. <laughs> Four. <laughs> four. <laughs> you're so, four and you're getting kicked off of your rugby I know. Team. That's a bad start. <laughs> that is awesome. So then uh, my mom starts uh, thinking of another sports and uh, hockey, uh, well, actually skating came up because it was cooler. So yeah. um, actually I end up going there and um, my mom always say to everybody, as soon as I see some hockey guys playing, this, she says, this is what I want to do. Really? So. so does Lindy stop down practice now every four minutes so you can get water or <laughs> what? No, he doesn't do that. For some reason, they don't let us do that. And so once you found hockey, how old were you when you first put on skates? Uh, 3.34, like b basically the same time. I get kicked out. Uh, just You get right to hockey. Yeah, right and then was hockey. that it from there? Did you play any other sports growing up? Uh, I tried to play soccer, but I wasn't really good with my feet. Yeah. No. So uh, I just I uh, just love hockey. That's uh, the only thing I wanted to do. And um, well, first of all, I never thought I would play in the National Hockey League. Um, I always thought uh, I would always wanted to play for Team France because I thought that was more accessible. Right. And um, just came one step at a time. Every, uh, every time I get closer, and uh, that was perfect. So what was your first year, or what, like, at what point um, did you realize? What were you 17, 18? Where you're like, man, I. I can make the transition from this to the NHL. Well, first off, like when I, I was born in France, and my whole oh, family, that's right, you were yeah, and uh, my whole family moved to Quebec when I was uh, 15, and I was pretty good at the time, but not good enough to say I'll be Sidney Crosby or uh, something like that. So I was good enough to play in good ca caliber, but uh, I would just work hard and always like uh, get better. So I played junior major, and then uh, I turned pro. I wasn't drafted. Uh, it was big uh, deception for me at that point and uh, so I tried to get better better and uh, at that point uh, I was 20 or something like that and I turned pro at a contract in the minor league uh, East Coast uh, East Coast and uh, AHL and uh, worked my way up so all right so when you guys moved to Quebec did you did your parents move because your dad got another job or did they move because to improve your hockey no, actually, my parents, uh, they, they were tired of uh, the way they were living in France. And um, they, we always, uh, w I was kind of a lucky kid because we, uh, we, uh, we got to move a lot and travel and see the world a little bit with my parents. So we, uh, we went in Quebec a couple times and uh, my parents just fell in love with uh, Mont-Tremblant, where my two friends in the back are from over there. Hi, boys. 
and um, so uh, they fell in love with that place and um, so they decide to uh, yeah we want to build a bed and breakfast over there and that's what they do now oh really they run a bed and breakfast yeah wow so that's a completely uh, change of lives and they love it nice that's so different so on the stars they tell us that uh, it's up to you they look to you to bring the chip a little bit bring the edge and go out there and you know stir things up a little bit maybe agitate if you will Sometimes is that, guess, is yeah. that a, a fair assessment yeah it is uh well i always play hard and uh usually when someone uh like rub you the, uh, the wrong way you don't like it and uh it's usually what i do on the ice and uh just um i bring the emotion on and uh Usually that piss pit pull off. <laughs> they don't <laughs> like to uh, to be play hard on, so it's just uh, just emotion game, and uh, people don't like that. So I just have to uh, answer my action uh, most of the time. He's too nice. He seems too nice to yeah, bring you that, really uh, do, that man. edge. Yeah, you really do, man. You should put some skates in. We'll no, see. I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to die or anything. So I'm perfectly content here. No, I don't want to be suspended here. <laughs> All right, so uh, on that front, last night sucked. It was disappointing, and you guys keep going. We have Lindy on every week, and he talks about the uh, the peaks and the valleys, and you guys, uh, you've had a lot of them, it seems like. You're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. You need that little 8 out of 10 winning streak to come to fruition here. Yeah, uh, well, tomorrow's game is going to be huge for us. Well, every game is going to be huge till yeah. uh, the end of the season. Uh, but basically, the team we're, we're fighting against, uh, like Winnipeg, Minnesota, uh, the Sharks or uh, like Calgary, those those teams that we have to uh, to win games because they are four points victory basically, and uh, so that's um, it's up to us I guess uh, for the last uh, 24 game to make up some ground and uh, hopefully like um, secure uh, playoff spots again. All right, here's what I don't understand about guys like you who bring the edge out there. How how do you know how far to take this thing? There's a line out there somewhere, and it seems to move all the time about you know, how far to take it and when you're going to go over the line and do something that's detrimental, thereby pissing the coach off at you. Like, kind of like, uh, kind of like Garbutt did last night. Uh, yeah, I, well, it's... I, it seems like that line always moves, you know? But it always depends. Like, you, I felt like you always have to be aware of what kind of, who's riffing the game and uh, yeah. what's, uh, who's your best opponent and stuff like that, what you can do. And you usually the ref lets you know basically right away. If you if you kind of you can have a good night or you can't, he'll tell the, you. He'll tell you right away. I don't want that tonight. So then you take a, uh, a little bit off. But so it's sometimes like I said, it's an emotional game. You uh, you try to bring everything to the table. Uh, 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 Ryan and uh, myself, we uh, we came in that league, pr- uh, bringing energy and playing really hard. And uh, sometimes didn't think of like what we do on the ice, like over like uh, like being pissed off people. Uh, of people mm-hmm. so it just uh, sometimes we we go over the edge but um, I felt like uh, myself this year I, I've been pretty uh, accurate and uh, I stay on the line pretty good sometimes I wasn't too close and I'm, I'm not as effective so uh, I'm really effective when I'm uh, playing really hard piss people off and uh, and just stay on that good side yeah does Lindy let you know uh, of you course go? yeah well it's that's a that's a coach uh, he, 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 I mean, will, he say, job, will he, he, he say something or just give you a look like, dude, that's too much? Or well, or you always know, like, yeah. basically, if you end up in the <laughs> if you end up in the prison, right, like, right, <laughs> the in jail. Prison. Yeah, usually when you're in prison, you do know that, don't well, you? Well, it's a French t- uh, word for it. I don't know. It's translated sometimes. Just came, didn't came up. Shut up. All right. So, <laughs> uh, speaking of the the whole French thing, because we all know how the French accent works on women. You know, you could be you could come over here and be a guy that makes $2.85 an hour, and you could just walk out to any bar and throw that accent out there, and women are like, ooh, well, what, who's this? That's mysterious and wonderful and European. And erotic. Yes. So do you get Exotic. that? Exotic. Yes. Do you get that? It works, right? Well, usually it's a hit or miss, basically. Yeah, it's uh, either they like it, either they don't like it. But uh, for me, it's no, uh, no point to have a girlfriend. Uh, so It's good. It's good. Now, on the flip side of it, when you were growing up, and you were too young, probably. Well, people that maybe came to Quebec because that's what is that? Ninety percent French? Uh, I don't know. Uh, prob- I, in Montreal, I actually, it's uh, fi- 
let's say 50 50 okay and uh but in the uh, all around it's just more just pure french okay because i wonder about the americans and the american accents when they go to the foreign lands because i've been over there before but i was at the point where i i, I was in no state to pick up women but <laughs> what do you mean I, I went to Do we Am- have a story? I went to Amsterdam. I'm sure people would want to hear a story here. You know, there are things over there that <laughs> are, heard it, that are legal. And you think so? Uh, it was just awful. But anyway, so. so did you find that Americans that traveled over to France or that, uh, you know, went up to Quebec and flashed their accent like, hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Does that work on women the way the French accent does in the States? Well, I guess you, uh, well, the guys who were in the army for World War II, they had no problem. That's true. With women there, so I guess uh, it's kind of flashy and uh, they had success. I didn't think about that.